I'm Ryan David and the following video is a short clip of a lecture that I gave to my introduction to psychology course on personality theory. It's the first part in a four part series that I did in talking about Sigmund Freud and uh, his role uh, in, 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 in personality theory and what he contributed. But before, I, before you see this video, I want to just preface this video with a few things, a few points I want to make. The first part that I want to make, the first point I want to make has to do with the verbiage that I use when talking about the mind. Now, Sigmund Freud had a certain model of the mind that I'll talk about uh, in these clips and these videos. But in this particular video, you might hear me use the word or the terms unconscious mind and conscious mind. I want to clarify that after some research that I did, we only have one mind. And so when I say the unconscious mind, what I'm referring to is the aspect of our mind that's unconscious. So our unconscious, uh, our unconscious, the un unconscious aspect of our mind or our unconscious drives and desires. So I'll say unconscious mind, but I'm talking about the unconscious aspect of our mind or the conscious aspect of our mind. So I want to point that out and clarify that because it's kind of a, mis, 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 way, um, uh, a misnomer and, and, and you're misspeaking when you say conscious mind, unconscious mind. We only have one mind. Uh, we have an unconscious aspect to it according to Freud and, and a conscious aspect. So I want to clarify that. The second thing I want to point out and make sure I clarify, the, the uh, second thing is has to do with Freud's contribution to psychology and his contribution uh, of a framework or a model that has to do with the unconscious mind. Freud didn't uh, discover or, or invent or create, per se, the unconscious mind. There were discussions and conversations prior to Freud about uh, this unconscious uh, aspect of our minds or the unconscious mind. There was conversations about it before Freud, but Freud took the concept and really created a framework and a model to use to apply uh, if you will, to his to his specific theory and his specific approach to human behavior. So I want to clarify that one as well, because I may mention something along the lines of Freud invented or created or discovered the, the unconscious mind. And what he did was he just kind of ran with it and, and, and furthered what we know about it and how we use it. So two points of clarification I want to make there. Um, be sure to subscribe if you're not already subscribed, if you do like this content, and check out the other clips that I have, uh, the follow-up clips that I have for the other three uh, sessions of, of this lecture. I hope you enjoy. The first approach that tries to understand and looks at personality is the psychodynamic perspective. Now, let's look at what the psychodynamic perspective is overall, because Freud's not the only one that took a psychodynamic, a psychodynamic uh, approach to the personality. He's the one who pretty much proposed it um, and, and created it. But he had other studies and he had other people who followed that same approach. So the approach, the approach in general, though, is a view that emphasizes that personality is primarily what? Personalized primarily Unconscious. what? Unconscious. Unconscious. That's critical. Whenever you hear psychodynamic perspective, whenever you hear psychodynamic, remember psychodynamic is Freudian. Psychodynamic is what he proposed, and Freud was the, really the one who coined and, 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 and really uh, discovered, if you will, the role of the unconscious mind. So psychodynamic is primarily considered is primarily concerned with unconscious, the unconscious, okay, unconscious thoughts, unconscious drives. The unconscious mind. Okay, that's what the psychodynamic perspective really is founded on. The unconscious mind. Okay, um, they look look at unconscious as the motivated suppression. Um, we'll talk more about that in a, in a tad bit. And he also said that there's symbolic meanings that underlie behaviors, meaning what you do consciously and how you act out in your everyday life. Um, there's there's an unconscious meaning as to why you did that or to explain or, or, or an explanation to explain why you're doing what you're doing. So, um, you know, just a real quick example, like Freud might say that, you know, if there's a female or a woman that is attracted to a man and she starts to, you know, play with her hair, that's unconscious. She's not playing with her hair because she's consciously attracted to him, but Freud might point out that look what she's doing with her hair. That's a, that's a behavior, obviously, that we see, but the unconscious drive there is something that's going on in the back of our mind that she's not even aware of. So he would say that there's symbolic meanings. There's a meaning behind what you do. Okay. And ironically enough, though, there's, there's something that's pretty famous about Freud that he kind of, um, well, I'll get to it when we talk about oral fixation. He had a quote that was pretty funny that kind of dispelled that for him, at least. And last but not least, Freud said that not only are unconscious drives and unconscious desires and the unconscious mind, not only does it play a huge role and a big role, um, primarily the primary role when it comes to personality, but Freud was also mainly concerned and focused on the timeline on when personality developed and what 
stage in your life had, a, had the most impact on personality. And he said that the stages in your life that had the most impact, if not the only impact, on personality, and personality was fully developed by the time you were puberty, was childhood. He said that early childhood, what you went through from birth to about puberty, really at the, at the, at the core of, of your personality was, was formed during that time frame. So we'll look at his, they're called five, they're called psychosexual stages of development. And there's five of them. We'll talk, we'll talk about those today. That's O Apple G. I coined that acronym, by the way, or initialism. Just for you guys. Get to that in a little bit. So Freud said that the stages of development that took place between birth and about puberty is the time when our personality is created or developed or or molded, right? That's that's when it was. He said, and after that, pretty much it's kind of set in stone. So he said your personality was mostly determined by these childhood experiences throughout these childhood stages, those five psychosexual stages, which are quite interesting, and that's why I'm going to take today's class to make sure we understand not just the significance and the role of them, but exactly what each and every one of them are. So Freud was also concerned with childhood experiences. He said that they sculpt the individual's personality. Okay? So this is the approach, that psychodynamic approach that, that Freud took and that psychodynamic perspective takes when it comes to explaining and understanding personality.